it's a phenomenal thing. You could build a second house on every single yard in Los Angeles, as far as I can tell. You could store your car here, or you could live here, <laughs> take a pic. And so I'd much rather have a house than have a place for my car. This is a 1930s, kind of a very, very generic bungalow. When we bought it, we knew that we wanted to build a uh, second house on it. We chose to leave the, the, the 1930s house intact and just build a completely separate structure in the back. So this used to be actually a driveway that went all the way through and there was a garage back there. So we just tore down the garage and we built the house in its place. The garage was right where our front door and that's why we have this corner because we were able to inherit the footprint. Otherwise you have to do a five foot setback. So it's from there to pretty much that corner but about a foot back. And so this garage had the most stunning view you've ever seen. Were you even aware that there was this spectacular spot here? No, you weren't because you would come in from the street and you have the big garage door over here and then this would be all paved in concrete. So it just felt very ordinary. And the only time you get a glimpse of it is when you come around the corner and all of a sudden you got this like, wow, nobody told me about this. <laughs> and so like it was just a no brainer that, okay, we got to do this. We got to absolutely just, you know, tear this thing down and build ourselves a house over here and, and enjoy this, this wonderful space here. So, so you live here. Yeah, we used to live in the front house. We tried different options to see whether to add a second story to the front house or maybe do a tear down and do something brand new. And we decided, oh, maybe build a back unit. This was actually the cheapest. I mean, that's the beauty of just starting from scratch because if you're trying to renovate the ultimate fixer upper, there's always this kind of a balance like, oh shoot, what do I keep? What do I change? And here you're starting from scratch and frankly, it's actually cheaper. Because as you can see, even the original house from 1930s, this house has these very small windows and it has very little view towards the garden, very little view towards the actual neighborhood and doesn't get much cross ventilation. So that's another downside of these older houses, whereas in modern house, you can basically eliminate the whole air conditioning business. By just a little bit of smart design, you can provide yourself adequate air movement all day long where you don't need AC at all. That's kind of the whole point of the design is that, as you can see, all these doors are open. The house has been very intentionally designed this way to have three sets of large sliders. So we open out to the garden, particularly now that we're working both from home. We eat out here every single day and we debated whether we wanted the Nana door or we didn't want it, and I chose not to do it. One was that we didn't have a, a big budget. We had a kind of a modest budget, so that was one reason. But also what I liked about this is, this is just super functional. It's really lightweight. It's just easy to use it all the time, back and forth. We want to close it, we want to open it. At night, there's some mosquitoes, so we close it. As you can see, today is a really hot day, and we don't have the AC on because we don't need it. The cross ventilation is so good. Uh, it was really designed to do that. The house really was designed so feel like one open space, kind of loft style. That's a bedroom, that's another bedroom. And then you have the expense of the double height space. But predominantly what you feel is when you come in, you have this kind of a sweeping view, horizontal sweeping view, really looking out at the garden space, at the landscape, at the view beyond. And as you can see, it's a single room, one room in the entire space on the ground floor. And this wall is where all the guts of the house are. Yeah, so like this is our pantry over here, this and that. And you can see that it's built underneath the stairs, so you can see a piece of the stairs, so we had to cut that out. There's no customization of cabinetry, it's all from Ikea, so it's really straightforward. You know, all of these are fairly conventional. There's, you can see some more of that stair. You can see more of our junk. And then these are, these are pretty st straightforward standard cabinets over here. So as you can see, even the walls on the ground floor are painted black, which is fairly unusual. People are usually scared when a contractor heard like black, what do you mean black? I'm like, he's like black, black? I'm like, yes, black, 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 just black, regular black. And black is this sort of strange accent where on one side, it is kind of accent because of all this cabinetry, but over there it kind of goes away. It just, just kind of blends away. And when you come in, you don't see those walls. All you see is just a view horizontally across and out. That also extends out to the exterior. 
the ground floor is black and then the white is on the second floor. So you got the smaller volume on the ground floor and then the bigger volume on the second floor that pushes out. How large is the footprint? 600 square feet. It's roughly 20 by 30. So it's, it's fairly small. I mean, for us, it's actually, it's more than enough. We generally don't want to have any more space than this because it's already a lot to maintain as it is. So one of the other things I wanted to, to show you on the exterior is we got this deck. And Yuki is Japanese, and I'm fascinated by Japanese architecture. And if there's any influence here of Japanese design, it's this kind of very narrow but long deck that wraps around the house. It's called Engawa, and it's kind of this interesting interstitial space that it's just narrow enough, enough to be functional and to be usable, and it's just high enough where you can actually sit on it. So. We do this all the time where we just sit out here and when we have friends over, we just hang out. We have drinks here at night. So it's this kind of very pleasant space to hang out. And it's, you know, we, it, it, it's just, it's all around the house. So you could have so many people hanging out here and it's fun and it's, it doesn't require bringing out and logging out furniture. So it's just like a bench. Yeah, it's basically a bench around the house. Correct. Yeah. And Engawa is actually kind of used for moon watching. It's actually very typical in Japanese culture to have a drink out on this kind of a deck and, and just hang out here at night, watch the moon. We sit on this side and then it wraps around the house to this side here. And it's a little bit more dramatic here. And if you're going to come out here, please be careful because there's no railings anywhere over here. It's kind of scary. So we just sit out here too and, and we enjoy the view to downtown and the city lights and... That's fabulous. So everything becomes functional then. It does, yeah. And so we also planted much of this landscape here because we wanted to have this kind of a, a lush landscape buffer and a little bit of a screening, screening off a little bit of the, the neighborhood uh, traffic and the, the, the bigger roofs. But you get this layered effect, you get this landscaping here in the foreground, then you get this kind of a middle ground over here of more landscaping, the hills, and then the kind of a sp uh, sprinkle of, of houses. And then hill, and behind the hill is downtown, and then beyond further, that's essentially, that's actually LAX over there. So we see, at night, we see all these kind of uh, glowing lights out there, and then, and then the airplanes landing, which is kind of cool since we're so far away, we don't listen to it, but it's still kind of picturesque. You would never know this was behind that little cottage. Right, yeah, you kind of, it's very hidden, it's very private, and, and, and I like that about it. It's kind of unassuming, Yeah. and it, it's a, our little paradise here. It feels like it. It feels like a little oasis, is the word. I don't know, with all these sort of frond-like plants. Yeah. <laughs> And th this is reclaimed wood. These are really thick planks. This one is probably about 16 inches wide. They're four inches thick. So this is reclaimed old lumber from old style construction. We thought, wow, this is actually perfect. This sort of has this really simple look to it, very functional, but it's got this kind of uh, interesting character, texture, a little bit of history. Hmm. Yeah, it does feel like almost someone's second residence, it's like really, a getaway. It certainly feels like this right now. I kind of feel like we've got this our little corner where we've made it ours. We don't really need much more than this. Kind of, yeah, it's just kind of a hidden space, right? You don't expect it. It's in the middle of the city. It just, it just works so well for us right now. Let's go upstairs. So this stair is kind of a, a hidden special feature. On this side over here, it's all black and on the interior it's wood and it's wood because the floors upstairs are wood starting with the stair going upstairs and so we wanted to treat this entire space with this wood color to contrast the black and it's in a double height space so when you're up in the main living space area when the lights are on at night these opening glow with this very warm tone of warmth and it feels kind of like a lantern in contrast with this black wall So again, we're sticking to the same material and color palette, black wood, wood floor, wood doors and windows, black railing. And then this is the guest bedroom over there. This is the uh, master bedroom, or our bedroom in here. So uh, you can see the idea that we want to have that double height space that gives us sweeping view across. And the two bedrooms are pushed out to the ends. But it's just, it's, it's really pleasant to have this space to go back and forth here. 
We do plan on putting our pictures from our travels up here, so it's going to be our little gallery here. This is one of those features where you get this borrowed light, borrowed view across, and you can see from this bedroom to this to, to the next room and then beyond to the next bedroom. So generally this is open, and when we have guests, we want to close it for privacy. We have these doors, kind of a bifold. One little or cool trick. And something similar over in the other bedroom. You could see that the rooms aren't very big, but because it's got a, a nice window and it's got this big opening that borrows light, I feel like it's adequate. Right now we're missing furniture. We didn't get it yet. <laughs> Uh, so right now it's actually just storage for paintings. So there's a lot of these paintings here. We're gonna we're gonna hang them on these big walls over here. Some of them are of my brother's work, and others are from our travels. So this door also closes like so, and generally we leave it open like that. So it's a sort of a French balcony. Yeah, you get to see a little bit over the tops of uh, trees and landscape and over the tops of roofs, so you start to pick up more and more views out. So again, what we wanted to do is have this loft feel where the spaces are open and we can borrow that, that space as much as we possibly can. We get a fairly nice morning sunlight. <laughs> what just uh, surprises me uh, is the fact that there was a garage here. Yeah. And it, it is kind of shocking. They only went up one floor, but it just feels so high. Bathrooms are pretty conventional. The only thing that I kind of really wanted to do is number one, have it as simple as possible. And also I wanted to have a little bit of color. So we chose these Spanish tiles. I think this is, it's got, you know, it gives us privacy. So the two of us can use this bathroom mm -hmm. at the same time. You know, it gives you enough privacy, but yet still feels open. This is the washer dryer closet, you know, right here, right outside of our bedroom. So it's again, it's very functional. And so this is also a door that goes upstairs to the roof. So it's a little kind of a window to get more natural daylight in here, but we've got this just so that it feels a little bit more secluded. Very bright up here, but it's a fairly clean slate. So you could do many things here, including bowling and parties and Moroccan uh, themed uh, lounges. We haven't finished it yet. It's sort of our day two project. Our plan is to put solar panels over here in this area. And then here I want to build a little raised deck. That's like about this tall, three feet. Leave a gap on the perimeter. So kind of like that scary experience we have on the garden where you have a edge you can stand on and no railing. Here too, but we're going to pull away from the edge so that actually nobody could ever fall because that'd be not good. And so the deck is going to be from here to here. And that way, we're, if you race, then you could have sofas, lounge chairs, and just kind of hang out here, chill out, have a drink, have dinner, and have this unobstructed 360 degree view. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to believe they were in the middle of a metropolis yeah. right now. That's obviously downtown Los Angeles. Those towers on the horizon over there, that's Century City and Beverly Hills. You can barely make out the towers, like super hazy out in the horizon there. That's Santa Monica and Westwood. These towers over here, that's Koreatown. Hollywood sign is over there. You can barely make it out. And the observatory is right below it, yep. If you look down, you can kind of see the reclaimed wood in the path, and we did all that. Everything was paved in concrete. First thing I wanted to do is just rip out as much of the concrete as I possibly could because I, I just don't like it. When we built it first, I came out here and my legs were shaking because I did not expect this height. It's kind of stunning that if you think about it, you were just on the ground floor and you walk up a few steps and you're all of a sudden up here. So it's kind of hard to believe that we're so close to downtown Los Angeles, all the hustle and bustle in here that feels sort of very suburban and, and very uh, kind of, you know, almost rural. I mean, to me, this project, to me, it, it showed me the potential of the ADU. Yes, it's, it's a phenomenal thing. But it's better than, it's better than the main house, right? Like, you yeah. think of an ADU as sort of a secondary unit. Right, it's right, kind exactly. of the smaller thing, the in-law unit, the worst house. This is the best house. Yes. 
Yeah, I, th I think that it's just, it has the kind of a connotation because it's called accessory dwelling unit and people don't really know what it is. If you call it, it's just essentially, it's a second house. It's a backyard house. That's all that it is. And the zoning is what designates, gave you that name and what really made it possible for every single homeowner to become a mini developer and build their own house. And I highly encourage everybody to do it because it's, it's scary, yes, but it's fun, it's rewarding. When you get it, when you do it, you'll be really satisfied with it. And I totally implore everybody to like, think about it as your own house because you're gonna do a much better job and then you're gonna have easy time renting out the front house or the main house. And to think about it is like, this is your opportunity to build a dream house in I, your backyard. I think, absolutely. Right?